Hi guys, I hope you're doing really well. My name is Sarah and welcome to What the Horror, the channel where we talk about horror movies old and new. So the holiday season is upon us and Halloween is sadly starting to feel like a bit of a distant memory. However, that doesn't mean that there isn't plenty of horror fun to be had in the Christmas period. In fact, as you probably saw from the title of today's episode, I have 25 horror films for you to enjoy over the holiday season. Think of this as your horror film advent calendar. I have films set on Thanksgiving and Black Friday. I have films that take place during Christmas and films set around Christmas. And to finish off, I have films set on New Year's Eve. Basically, this list has everything you need to get you through the holidays. Okay, little disclaimer, by the time I'd finished, it was more like 30 films for you to enjoy, but some of those are just honorable mentions. There won't be any spoilers in this episode as this is a list of suggestions rather than a list of reviews. I will also make it clear that I'm not saying these are all great movies or even good movies in some cases. These are simply horror movies to get you into the festive spirit. And with that in mind, let's get into the list. First up, we have Blood Rage, a B-movie slasher released in 1987. In 1974, a young Terry commits murder and frames his twin brother Todd for it. Ten years later, Todd escapes from a mental institution on the same day as his brother Terry's murderous instincts resurface. Set on Thanksgiving, this is the perfect way to kickstart your holiday season. Next up, we have Black Friday, a horror comedy released in 2021, starring Devin Sawa and Bruce Campbell. Disappointed they can't spend Thanksgiving with their families, co-workers at We Love Toys toy store gather to prepare for Black Friday. But after an employee is attacked by a parasite, chaos ensues and they must now protect each other from a horde of parasite-infected shoppers. Black Friday ends up trying to balance commentary on the horror of materialism with a monster movie, all the while never quite reaching its potential. However, there is still a lot of fun to be had here. Now we're moving into Christmas and we're starting off strong with the original Black Christmas, a Canadian slasher released in 1974, starring Olivia Hussey, Margot Kidder and John Saxon. As the winter holidays begin, a group of sorority sisters begin receiving anonymous and threatening phone calls. When one of the sisters goes missing and a young local girl is found dead, the rest of the sorority sisters suspect there is a serial killer on the loose but no one realizes just how near the killer is. This is one of my all time favorite slasher films and an absolute must watch for the Christmas period. And to balance out the brilliance of the original, we now have the remake released in 2006 titled Black Xmas. The holiday season turns deadly for a group of sorority sisters who are stranded at their campus house during a snowstorm. With an escaped killer returning home and the sorority sisters getting picked off one by one, who will survive the night? Okay, look, I know this one is a little bit trashy. It comes nowhere close to the brilliance of the original and has some pretty nasty and unpleasant aspects to the story, but there is still some fun to be had with it. And besides, it's better than the 2019 remake in my opinion. Okay, next we have the newly released It's a Wonderful Knife, starring Justin Long and now streaming on Shudder. Winnie's life is less than wonderful one year after saving her town from a psychotic killer on Christmas Eve. When she wishes she was never born, she finds herself magically transported to a nightmarish parallel universe. With the murderous maniac now back, she must team up with a misfit to identify the culprit and get back to her own reality. Taking the classic film It's a Wonderful Life and putting a horror twist twist on it, this is this year's Christmas horror release. Next we have Krampus, a horror comedy released in 2015 and based on the folklore of the Krampus. It was written and directed by Mike Doherty and stars Tony Collette, Adam Scott and David Koshner. Frustrated by the constant quarrel between the members of his dysfunctional family, Max loses interest to celebrate Christmas, awakening Krampus, a demon who will punish his entire family. Krampus is a slightly softer horror film, so it acts as a great gateway horror. It's also one of my personal favorites to have as a yearly rewatch. Next, we have Better Watch Out, a psychological Christmas horror film released in 2017. Ashley, a 17-year-old girl, is babysitting Luke, a 12-year-old boy, during Christmas. 
However, they find themselves a target of an unusual home invasion. This is a hard one to talk about in any way without giving something away. So all I will say is go into this one as blind as you can and have a good time. Next, we have Silent Night, Deadly Night, a slasher film released in 1984. Little Billy witnesses his parents getting killed by Santa after being warned by his senile grandpa that Santa punishes those who are naughty. Now Billy is 18 and out of the orphanage and he has just become Santa himself. Silent Night Deadly Night has gone on to become a cult classic with a large fan base and while it's a fun slasher it does try to veer into some darker topics. And if that wasn't enough for you then we also have Silent Night Deadly Night sequel Silent Night Deadly Night Part 2 released in 1987. This sequel focuses on Ricky, the brother of Billy from the first film. Ricky is being held in a mental hospital, committed there after committing a series of murders. One Christmas Eve, Ricky begins telling the story of both his and his brother Billy's murders. Next up, we have P2, a horror thriller that was released in 2007 and stars Rachel Nichols and Wes Bentley. A businesswoman finds herself locked with an unhinged security guard in a parking garage after getting stuck working late on Christmas Eve. This is one that I've not actually seen yet, but is definitely on my to watch list for this Christmas. Next, we have A Christmas Horror Story, a Canadian horror anthology film that was released in 2015. Not even Santa Claus is safe from the evil that descends on Bailey Downs, a small town that is suddenly plagued with malevolent spirits, zombie elves and Krampus, the anti-Santa Claus. Another one on my watch list for this season, if for no other reason, than it stars William Shatner. That's right, Captain Kirk himself in a horror movie. I mean, if that doesn't sell you. Next, we have Christmas Evil, a slasher film released in 1980. A toy factory worker mentally scarred as a child upon learning Santa Claus is not real, suffers a nervous breakdown after being belittled at work and embarks on a yuletide killing spree. Christmas Evil is a slasher film that has been credited with having more depth to it than some of its peers, including its look at the contrast between the message of love, charity and goodwill to all men that often comes with Christmas, with the struggles of children and the mentally ill during the holidays. Next up, we have a Creepshow holiday special released in 2020 and directed by Greg Nicotero. In the holiday-themed episode, Shapeshifters Anonymous, fearing he is a murderer, an anxious man searches for answers for his unique condition from an unusual support group. With a runtime of 46 minutes, this is a great quick watch for when you don't have lots of time to spare. Next up, we have one that some of you may argue isn't horror, and while that may be true, I'm still putting it on this list because there is enough violence and kills to make it at least horror-adjacent. And that is Violent Night, released in 2022 and starring John Leguizamo and David Harbour. When a team of mercenaries breaks into a wealthy family compound on Christmas Eve, taking everyone inside hostage, the team isn't prepared for a surprise combatant. Santa Claus is on the grounds and he's about to show why this Nick is no saint. Next up, we have another one that some of you may question its inclusion on this list, and that is Scrooge, released in 1951 and starring Alistair Sim. Ebenezer Scrooge malcontentedly shuffles through life as a cruel, miserly businessman until he is visited by three spirits on Christmas Eve who show him how his unhappy childhood and adult behaviour has left him a selfish, lonely old man. Sure, it's not a horror film, but it is based on Charles Dickens' A Christmas Carol, which is a ghost story. And when I was a kid, the ghost of Christmas future terrified me. So, on the list it goes. Plus, it's a wonderful story that is still so relevant today. Next up, we have Anna and the Apocalypse, a British zombie musical horror movie released in 2017. Yep, you heard me right, a musical horror movie. A zombie apocalypse threatens the sleepy town of Little Haven at Christmas, forcing Anna and her friends to fight, slash, and sing their way to survival, facing the undead in a desperate race to reach their loved ones. Next up is Christmas Bloody Christmas, one of the most recent films on this list, released in 2022. It's Christmas Eve and Tori just wants to get drunk and party, but when a robotic Santa Claus at a nearby toy store goes haywire and begins a rampant killing spree through her small town, she's forced into a battle for survival. Next, we have Silent Night, released in 2021 and starring Kira Knightley, Matthew Good, Annabelle Wallace and Lily Rose Depp. 
Nell, Simon and their boy Art are ready to welcome friends and family for what promises to be a perfect Christmas gathering. Perfect except for one thing, everyone is going to die. This is another rogue entry on this list as it's not technically a horror, instead it's listed as a black comedy but there is definitely a horrific element to it so I wanted to include it on the list. Okay so that's it for horror films where Christmas is the core part of the story. Now we're looking at films that are still set on and around Christmas but it isn't the main aspect of it. First up is The Conjuring 2 released in 2016 and starring Vera Farmiga, Patrick Wilson and Francis O'Connor. Peggy, a single mother of four children, seeks the help of occult investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren when she and her children witness strange paranormal events in their house. The Conjuring 2 is a Christmas horror film and with the freezing cold setting of Britain in winter during the 70s, it's also a perfect winter slash Christmas watch. Next up we have Gremlins, a comedy horror film released in 1984. When Billy Peltzer is given a strange but adorable pet named Gizmo for Christmas, he inadvertently breaks the three important rules of caring for a mogwai and unleashes a horde of mischievous gremlins on a small town. We all know gremlins, it's a great Christmas watch, a great family watch to a point and a great entry level horror. Next we have The Lodge released in 2019 and starring Riley Keough, Jaden Martell, Alicia Silverstone and Richard Armitage. A soon-to-be stepmom is snowed in with her fiancé's two children at a remote holiday village. Just as relations begin to thaw between the trio, some strange and frightening events take place. Another one I've not watched yet, but this has been on my to-watch list for forever. Hopefully this year is the year I finally check it out. I will say though that this one is going to be slightly like Silent Night in that it's quite a dark film with some upsetting themes, but I have heard nothing but praise for this film. Okay, next up we have one that is maybe another gamble, but that is The Curse of the Cat People. Released in 1944, this is the sequel to The Cat People, most famous for being the film credited with the first jump scare. The young, friendless daughter of Oliver and Alice Reed from the first film creates an imaginary playmate with surprisingly dangerous results. This isn't going to be for everyone. Sure, by today's standards, they are incredibly tame and slow burning, but The Curse of the Cat People is an incredible look at loneliness in childhood and being punished or ridiculed for not conforming. It's more of a ghost story than full on horror, but it's still a good watch and set around Christmas. Next up, we have Body, a thriller slash horror released in 2015. Three girlfriends celebrating Christmas Eve decide to go to a deserted mansion for fun. They find themselves at the crossroads of morality when things turn deadly. More thriller than horror but it has enough twists and entertainment value to deserve a spot on this list. Okay, the next one on this list is Dead End, released in 2003 and starring Ray Weiss and Lynn Shay. Christmas Eve. On his way to his in-laws with his family, Frank Harrington decides to try a shortcut for the first time in 20 years. It turns out to be the biggest mistake of his life. Okay, so look, I only recently heard of this one and when I saw the trailer, I thought it looked so batshit crazy that it made me want to watch it. Plus, it has my girl Lynn Shea in it, so why not? And I thought, why not add it to this list and let you enjoy the bizarreness too? Next, we have Windchill, released in 2007 and starring Ashton Holmes and Emily Blunt. Two students are headed home to Delaware for the Christmas holidays when they get into an accident. However, their predicament soon turns out to be the work of supernatural forces. When I watched this, I honestly couldn't decide if I liked it or not. There were things I really liked and things that I didn't, but this is set around Christmas and with its snowy setting, it's actually a perfect winter watch. So tick, tick, on the list it goes. And finally, the last one on this list is to round the year off for that New Year's Eve viewing and that is Terror Train, released in 1980 and starring Jamie Lee Curtis. A masked killer targets six college kids responsible for a prank gone wrong three years earlier and who are currently throwing a large New Year's Eve costume party aboard a moving train. Not one of Jamie Lee's best slashers, but it's a perfect watch to round out the year. Just before we finish, I do also have a couple of honourable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. First we have Thanks Killing, then Don't Open Till Christmas, a sleazy slasher, Holidays, a seasonal anthology film, and finally New Year's Evil, if you can find it anywhere. 
So there you are, 25 days of Christmas horror to fill your holiday season. Well, 25 with a cheeky few extras thrown in. I hope there was something on this list that caught your interest. Let me know which, if any, you are going to watch and let me know your own recommendations. But in the meantime, thank you as always for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and I will talk to you in the next episode. Bye.